Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Happy anniversary to me. The first Seven Pot Club YouTube video titled How to Grow Hot Peppers from Seed debuted five years ago today on February the 28th, 2018. That makes 2023 the sixth hot pepper growing season I'll be documenting on video. I'm so glad you're along for the ride, whether you've watched from the beginning or you're a first time viewer. I've got lots to show you, so let's get started. February is the magical month when I comb through the hot pepper seeds on hand and select which ones to grow. Then I plant the seeds indoors for preparation for outdoor growing in the spring. I know that many of you are anxious to learn which varieties I'm growing this year, so there's no reason to delay. While you're watching the list scroll by, let's take an extremely brief trip down memory lane, recalling some moments from the last five years of yours truly growing hot peppers and mugging for the camera. It's 2023 and won't you take another ride with me? You know it's time, time to do some gardening. you enjoyed that. So now it's 2023 and here we go again. Planting commenced on February 6th on the dining room table. My seed starting method hasn't changed much in the last five years. I use potting mix with a little added perlite mixed in. I have my seedling trays, nursery trays, and seeds. I also create planting charts to help keep track of which seeds are planted in which trays. It's not foolproof, but it works pretty well. I've made several videos over the years covering the seed sowing process, so I won't show it in detail again here. I'll provide links to some of these videos in the description if you want to see every step. I'll also include the grow list if you want to take a closer look. Basically, I place two to four seeds in each cell and cover them with soil. I can fit 12 of the six cell seedling trays in a 10 by 20 nursery tray. That means that three trays have a total of 216 cells, and I hope to get over 400 transplants from them. People are constantly asking me, Rob, where do you get those plastic trays and domes? Well, they're from Bootstrap Farmer, and you can purchase them on Amazon or directly from bootstrapfarmer.com. I think you have to buy a minimum of 10 trays or five domes, but they are so worth it. They are the sturdiest trays and domes I've ever used, and they'll last for many years. You know, I'm getting a little tired of saying link in the description every 30 seconds. So please just assume that I will provide links below for most of the gardening gear you see in this video. Some of those links will earn us a couple of coins when you make a purchase. It doesn't affect the price you pay, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks. Anyway, after I brought the freshly planted trays up to the attic, I added water and plugged in heating mats under each tray. The next morning, you can see how warm and moist it is under those domes. Now, I wait for germination. But I wasn't quite done planting yet. The following day, I sowed seeds in two mini planters, each with the same mix of varieties. That's because I'm trying something new this year. I'm adding Organic Rev organic growth stimulant to the water I use to fill the trays. I want to know if it really helps, so I'm planting these two test trays so I can compare results. In the black tray, I'm using plain tap water, while in the green tray, I'll use water to which I've added organic rev at the ratio of one tablespoon per gallon of water. I also added organic rev when I watered the three main trays. Organic Rev is manufactured right here in Minnesota, and I'll tell you much more about this amazing product in a separate video I'll shoot after I have some results to compare. I intend to keep track of these plants and continue the experiment over the course of the growing season. 
Anyway, I used these LED lighted domes to germinate these trays. No heating mat, so they'll probably take a little longer to sprout than the larger trays. I'll put them under brighter lights after they start sprouting. Now, back to the attic to present the first pepper sprout of 2023, this Sugar Rush Stripey, which appeared five days post planting. A couple of days later, quite a few started popping up. Due to the lighting, the soil surface doesn't appear as moist as it really is. I keep it pretty saturated until all seeds have germinated. I should really make a video detailing all the techniques I use to remove seed holes that don't fall off by themselves. After many years of practice and experimentation, I have about an 80% success rate, which is double the percentage I once had. It really takes finesse and patience, neither of which come naturally to me. Anyway, I have to try and remove them. You know, I may tear off the leaves in the process, but if you don't try and remove them, the plant will surely die. After two weeks, at least one seed head sprouted in most of the cells. I did a survey so I could determine which varieties had not yet germinated. I circled the cells with no seedlings. Some, but not all of these slow pokes did sprout over the next few days. The test trays were now up in the attic and coming along nicely as well. From this point forward, I'll be watering once a week with Organic Rev, except for the control tray, of course, which will only get plain water. For several days, I had been removing the domes during the day and replacing them at night. This was the last time I put the domes on the trays. A few more days and I removed the heat mats as well. A lot of these plants are going to be transplanted into the basement where it's several degrees cooler than it is here in the attic and they're going to need to acclimate to cooler temps. Now I'm pretty happy with my results so far. Transplantable seedlings have sprouted in well over 90% of the cells I planted. But there are still a few that didn't germinate and I replanted them a few days ago. They should start popping up in a day or two. Since I start pretty early, they'll have plenty of time to catch up to the others. As you can see, many of these seedlings have multiple sets of leaves and are ready to be transplanted into larger pots. I'll start that process later this week. Now, there's another area where I'm trying something new this year. I'm always looking for eco-friendly alternatives to plastic pots. For the past couple of years, I've been using fabric seedling bags. They work well, but they do take a lot longer to fill than rigid pots. So, I ordered up a batch of these biodegradable pots made from rice holes. I've been aware of these for several years, and I finally discovered where to buy them. You can use them for years just like plastic pots. When discarded, they'll naturally degrade in a municipal compost or landfill facility. I'll cover these pots in more depth in an upcoming episode. Finally, I have one additional preview of coming attractions. I love Sansi Grow lights. I've been using them for years now. With ceramic cooling and integrated lenses to focus the light from the diodes, they're very bright and efficient. These are Sansi 70 watt grow lights I'm using here in the attic. Sansi just sent me their newest and most powerful light, the 2200W. The review video for this new Sansi light will be coming soon. If you don't want to wait for that video, you'll find an Amazon link with more info in the description. Sorry, I said link in the description again after I promised not to. Oops. I've got a lot of what I hope will be interesting content coming up, and my plan is to release at least two videos a month over the course of this year. So please subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. Check out all our merch at 7pot.club slash merch. If you'd like a free 7pot Club membership card and stickers, get the details at 7pot.club slash card. And for even more 7pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For 7pot Club, I'm Rob.